Welcome to Allies or Enemies. This time we are looking at the Arzeum trilogy of games, which includes Above and Below, Near and Far, and Now or Never. All three games were designed and illustrated by Ryan Lockett and published by his company Red Raven Games. While these are all quite different games, there is an interesting progression that can be seen through the series, with each game building on the last, as well as some through threads in terms of things like art and the setting, as they all take place in the fantasy world of Arzeum. But before we get too far into the comparing and contrasting, let's take a quick look at what each game is. The first game in the series is also the simplest. In Above and Below, players use villagers to do various tasks like recruiting more villagers, building buildings, gathering and storing resources, and going out on quests. This last one involves assigning two or more of your villagers to a random choose-your-own-adventure-style kind of story where you will choose a challenge you think you can beat and then roll dice to see if you beat it. There's a bit of a push-your-luck element here that can be fun, unless the dice gods are against you. The whole game takes seven fairly quick rounds, and at the end you gain points from buildings and resources and the reputation that you have hopefully earned through your quests. The second entry in the series saw a giant leap in complexity. While Near and Far also has the possibility of one-off games and abstract adventures, it adds in the option to do a bevy of campaigns with specific character-driven stories. In Near and Far, you're in the shoes of a single adventurer who will collect up allies, equipment, food, and riding tortoises at the village, and then head out into the wilds on an adventure, which means setting up tents, fighting bandits, gathering gems and money, and completing quests. The quests are similar to the choose-your-own-adventure style in Above and Below, except now they are based on either the skill or combat of your party. The game length here is more variable, as it goes until someone places their final tent, and then points come from a mix of quests completed, bandits defeated, tents sheeted, and funds keep dead. Continuing the trend now or never ups the complexity again, as well as using even more table space. This is a big game in every way. Now you're both adventuring and building your own town. The adventuring part involves moving a character around the map, completing quests, fighting monsters, and visiting locations, all while leveling up your character and learning new skills, while the town portion of the game involves adding buildings to your burgeoning city and housing settlers as you go, with all of it hopefully leading to gaining a range of different goods that can be traded for money, which is then used to hire craftspeople who help you build more buildings Things, which, well, you can see where I'm going here. It's a big, intricate system that will take your full brain. There is also an interesting endgame scoring system, where the players get rid of all of their remaining goods and all of their money, and then you do one final income turn to see who has created the best engine. All three games are advertised as 2-4, to four, with Now or Never also offering a solo mode. For Above and Below, you'll be able to comfortably play at all of these counts, and it shouldn't make a huge difference. The turns are quick, even the adventures, and other than racing to purchase allies and building from the markets, there isn't oodles of interaction. The biggest thing will be that the markets will refresh quicker with more players, and selling goods will become a bigger part of the game. With Near and Far, we have always played at two, and we love it. There is a placeholder player that hangs out in the shop and fights you when you visit, but otherwise it is just a bit roomier, but with a tense head-to-head -head pace setting as we race to get our tents down. At three or four, there would be more duels in town and a tougher race for the mine spots and to get the best places on the map, so the tension would build in different ways. With now or never, however, I don't know if we'd ever play with more than two. It's a huge game and a lengthy one that will get exponentially longer with each added player. The interaction here is even more minimal as you all have your own building market and there is no dueling on the board. So you are mostly adding length and maybe a few more options for hiring opponent workers, but by and large, we would recommend the newest for lower counts. 
The components are great across the board. Red Raven have a very particular style to their games. The artwork is whimsical, the icons are all clear and helpful, and it really creates a feeling that we're just playing in a small corner of a much larger world. They're are a few trickies. The biggest is the resource trackers in Now or Never that can get a little bit jumbled and messy, but otherwise it's just little nitpicks like I wish it was easier to line up the card art with the side of the board in Above and Below, which is obviously a tiny complaint in what are three fantastically produced and well thought out games. Near and Far in particular shines here, with its map book and its character standees, although the character boards in Now or Never are very, very cool as well. Here is where we see some variance between the games. Because Above and Below doesn't have a larger campaign, and the quests are all totally random, it has the least built-in replayability. But on the upside, it is by far the quickest to play, and the easiest to set up. So if we want a quick hit of Arzium, it is the one we go for. Now or Never, on the other hand, has a huge campaign that covers six booklets that we have just barely even scratched the surface of. And because of the lengthy playtime and huge setup, we're maybe a bit daunted by it. And Near and Far is kind of the Goldilocks. Games tend to run about 90 minutes, and there is a bit of setup and upkeep, but nothing too daunting and we have come back and back to it. There are specific campaigns for every character, as well as a different story campaign, and all of them have been interesting. This is one of the very few games where we actively enjoy the writing and getting into the story. The story snippets are short, but interesting, and the game itself is really engaging. And the Amber Mines expansion adds even more depth that also fixes a few of the small iffies from the base game. You may have already guessed which one we like the best, but Near and Far is by far our consensus favorite. It's one of the most played games in our collection and a game that we would recommend to anyone looking for something that combines story with engaging and original mechanics. It's got a bit of worker placement, a bit of racing, and some pusher luck quests, though there is a little bit of complexity and some buy-in to the fantasy world that could be barriers for some gamers. Above and Below and Now or Never are also solid games. Both will fit very different players. Now or Never is by far the heaviest, and we would only recommend it for experienced gamers that want a big challenge. And not everyone is going to connect to that final scoring mechanism, as well as to the length and the breadth of it all. But for players that already own and like Near and Far, it is an interesting progression. Above and Below, on the other hand, is the lightest of the bunch and the easiest to introduce new gamers to, and it gives a nice glimpse into some of the original mechanics that show up throughout the series, though you will need to be okay with the randomness of the story quests and the dice rolling, and for folks that have only played more traditional style games, this could be a little bit of a leap. Overall, though, if you are interested in gameplay that's a little bit off the beaten path and intertwines narrative elements and quirky art, this could be a great series to check out. And that is it. Have you played any of the Arzium series? What did you think? And are there any other Red Raven games that you would recommend? And as always, please do like and subscribe, and hopefully we will see you all next time for another game.